We've come about 10 kilometers north of Ullapool and we're currently on a road size outcrop, which is quite um, a good size outcrop. And there's some really interesting structural geology that we can do here. This rock, it looks a bit gray and uninspiring, especially in the rain. However, it is a lot more interesting than would first appear. So what is the most obvious striking feature is the sort of flat lying planar foliations. Well, I'll come on to that in a minute. Let's just describe what it looks like. Well, it's grey. Um, it's very, very fine grained. I can't really see any grains with the naked eye, but almost like a sugary texture. The foliations are the most distinctive feature. And you can see that there are also some quartz veins which are picking these out. So it's kind of sub horizontal. Now, this is a really good example of a ductile fault rock. And when you get your eye in, you, this is very, very distinctive where you see these types of rocks. And it's called a myelinite. And a myelinite is a very, very fine grained ductile fault rock where we've had grain size reduction by dynamic recrystallization processes. So that means that instead of the grains being physically broken up, they are recrystallizing at a higher temperature. That's hence why it's a ductile fault rock. And we usually get these where we've got compressional faults, like a thrust fault. And we're in the Moyne thrust zone, so it's fairly um, obvious that this myelinite formed during thrusting. As these rocks form during faulting, we can sometimes find indicators of the way that the rocks have moved. So we need to look at a special surface. I've just got my hand on the foliation now. And when we're looking for shear sense indicators, which tell us how the fault has moved, we want to look at a surface which is at 90 degrees to the foliation and parallel to any lineations. So to find lineations, I need to look up on the foliation surface. Now I have to say in this outcrop, they're not extremely obvious. You can see some very faint lineations which are kind of coming out towards me. So if I wanted to look for a shear sense indicator, I'd need to look at this surface because we're at 90 degrees to the foliation, but parallel to those lineations. Now, as it's quite fine grained, I can't see any shear sense indicators, but in a coarser grain myelinite, I might be able to. Now let's look at a hand specimen. I'm going to describe now for you something that looks potentially like a fairly uninteresting grey rock. And if, you, if that was your opinion when you first saw that, that's not necessarily unreasonable. But let's just think about some of the sort of larger scale features we can see in this pretty big hand specimen here. So you might be able to see that we've got some kind of layers or bands here. So that's the kind of first thing that, that brings to my mind while I look at this. Now the actual grains themselves are very, very small. You can pretty much can't see them. I will do some close up photographs for you, but even when you look very close, it still just pretty much looks like a very fine grained gray rock. <laughs> but the, the sort of giveaway for us are these bands. The fact that we have very small grain size and we have bands. And when we look at this in the outcrop, there are these very distinctive planar fabrics which extend across the entire area. Now it's going to be difficult for you to interpret this by yourself so I'm now going to give you a bit of interpretation on what we would describe these rocks as. This is a myelinite. So a myelinite is a ductile fault rock that forms during dynamic recrystallization of typically quartz. This is what a thin section of a myelinite looks like in cross-polarised light. So we can see it's pretty much comprised of just quartz and that quartz is very, very fine grained. And um, I'm not going to go into too, too many details about the grain boundaries and um, what the grains look like. But essentially, we can see that they've all been um, recrystallized. They don't look like the sort of typical um, shape of a quartz crystal that we would get in a sedimentary or an igneous rock they are all very elongated they're very small and we can see that there is a distinct planar fabric preserved in this thin section 
So it's kind of difficult to tell what this rock was originally. It could have been a crystalline rock, something like a gneiss potentially. It could be, it's very difficult to tell because essentially all we have is some very, very fine, very, very hard minerals, which I'm interpreting are probably mostly quartz because it's such a hard rock. So what's happened to that original rock is it's been completely, basically obliterated during this ductile faulting. The original crystals have completely recrystallized and it's formed this fabric because there's been that recrystallization happened during dynamic motion. So we've, if we have ductile faulting at relatively high temperatures, so we're thinking something about three, 400 degrees, we will have this recrystallization into this very distinctive planar foliation. And when we have all of those things, we call the rock a myelinite.